that's what we have in payroll for, for these individuals, then we're breaking it out between these jobs that we paid for and this much is indirect that we couldn't apply to a particular job. So we're processing this now with a journal entry just like we would with payroll, meaning we're going to credit, we're going to say wages payable. In a simplified journal entry, it might be a credit to cash, right? Uh, or But wages payable will show us that it's for wages because we're processing payroll. And then the debit, usually we would think, well, it's payroll. It's going to go to it's going to go to wages expense. And again, we're not getting we're not getting into the withholdings and everything right now. It's a simplified uh, payroll journal entry, and we're just going to say, well, the debit would normally go to payroll expense, but now we're going to say no. It's going to go to work in process. Why is it going to go to work in process and not payroll expense when we're basically recording the payment of of employees? Because the expense isn't there just because it's payroll at the time we pay them. It's an expense because we used that work, that work in order usually to help us generate revenue in the same time period, the matching principle. Here, we use this labor not in order to help us generate revenue yet. It helped us to make inventory, which is work in process. It's part of the inventory. So the labor, the wages that we're paying is part of inventory. We will expense it when we're going to expense it when we sell the inventory in the form of cost of goods sold. Then the other side, this is going to be the, the labor that wasn't applied to a job, meaning like supervisor salaries or possibly uh, maintenance in the, in the warehouse. We couldn't apply it to a job. So it just is going to go to indirect. So it's going to go, we're still going to go to wages payable because we're going to pay these people. And, uh, and so it's going to eventually go to cash that you can think of that as cash. We're going to pay them as well. It's going to go out of payable and then in the cash eventually. And then the debit's going to go to factory overhead. So it's going to go to factory overhead. Again, it's not going to go to wages expense because we haven't used it. It's going to go to inventory eventually. And we're going to have to apply it out from factory overhead to inventory in some way. So if we look posting the journal entry to the general ledger, we've got the work in process here. So we've got the work in process was at 2,230. It's going to go up by the 4,200 to 6,430. That then is what we have here, 6,430. Wages payable. So here's wages payable. Was at zero. It's going to go up by 4,200. And again, you can think about it as if we were paying cash, right? Uh, uh, so wages payable is just going to be an intermediary. Uh, if this was a very simplified transaction, uh, it would just be a debit to the work and process credit uh, to cash. And that would be similar to us, again, just processing the payroll. We're not dealing with anything else like uh, the withholdings or anything. We're just looking at uh, a very basic kind of payroll journal entry. The main thing to note, however, of course, is that the expense here is not going to an expense. It's going to that inventory account. We also note that book problems will often use a payable account when working on these types of systems because what they're trying to do is show us just with the journal entry without having to have a note in the journal entry that what this is related to and if we just debit work in process and credit uh, cash then just by looking at the journal entry we wouldn't really know what's happening so we use the payable now payable is fairly often used but we might see it in some other areas where it's less you know you something like utilities we might see a utilities payable or something like that because that helps us to know that the part that's going into work in process is related to utilities in that case and usually we wouldn't have a utilities payable because we would just pay the utilities. It would be a credit to cash. We might do it with a note. So just uh, be aware of that. So we're just processing the payroll here. Wages payable. Then we have the factory overhead, 1,200. It was at 550. We're going to debit it 1,200 to uh, 1,750. That's the amount in factory overhead. And then we've got the wages payable again which was at 4,200, we're gonna credit the 1,200 to 5,400. So now we have wages payable, which we will pay soon. When we do so, uh, we will debit this, making it go down to zero and credit cash.